Hey, what's up guys, this is Larry B. I finished benchmarking my FX 6300 GTX 1050 Ti. I made this video as an offshot video of my Ryzen 3 2200G with a GTX 1050 Ti. I wanted to see what kind of performance this older FX chip had when compared to the newer Ryzen 3 using the GTX 1050 Ti. Before we get started, let's take a look at the system specs. The system we'll be looking at today uses an FX 6300. The FX6300 is a 6-core CPU and features a base clock of 3.5 GHz and a turbo clock of 4.1 GHz. For my OC results, I set an OC of 4.2 GHz on all cores. For the motherboard, I have a Gigabyte 978UD3 AM3 Plus motherboard. For the RAM, I'm using 16 gigs of 1866 DDR3 RAM. For the GPU, I'll be using the same single fan Gigabyte GTX 1050 Ti as I used in my Ryzen 3 GTX 1050 Ti benchmarks. As for the rest of the system, I have the OS installed on a 120 gig SSD and all games installed on a 1 trillibyte hard drive. The system is powered by an overkill 850 watt power supply. The OS used is Windows 10 Home Edition. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of future videos involving PC hardware, news, and games. Also check out the description below for Amazon affiliate links to all products benched. Okay, now that we've seen the numbers, there's a few points I'd like to go over. First, how the FX6300 felt to game on compared to something like the Ryzen 3 2200G when using the GTX 1050 Ti. At stock settings, games on the FX6300 felt noticeably worse than when ran on the Ryzen 3 2200G. The games that were, the games were all playable, but not nearly as smooth. Games that stuck out as playing poorly were Far Cry 5 and State of Decay 2. Set an OC on all cores of 4.2 for the FX6300 did help smooth things out and I would suggest that anyone still running FX6300 should look an OC in the chip. All games tested did feel smoother and more responsive after setting an OC. Uh, Far Cry 5 and City of K2 still didn't feel great but they were very playable. Games that stuck out as running exceptionally well on the FX system were Diablo 3 and Fortnite. Sadly, I did not test Fortnite at stock settings using the FX6300, though with an OC of 4.2, I was able to play Fortnite and it was very smooth. Overall, the numbers of the FX6300 and Ryzen 3 are close, but the Ryzen 3 does have considerably smoother gaming performance and all games tested compared to the older FX chip. After running tests on both the FX6300 and the new Ryzen 3 2200G, I can say that when paired with a lower end GPU such as the GTX 1050 Ti, the FX6300 still holds its own in many games. You would benefit from smoother gameplay by upgrading a new platform, but overall, there was nothing that was a showstopper in the game as tested. Would I recommend someone buy an AM3 Plus system today? No, not unless you can get it very cheap. While the FX6300 does ham handle the games tested well enough, the games that did give it problems were newer games. From my experience, newer games which put more demand on the CPU did not run as smoothly as I would have liked. I see this as becoming more of a problem in the future. Okay guys, so what's, what are y'all's thoughts on the FX6300? It did put up okay numbers, but the numbers don't always tell the whole experience. 
Would you buy an FX6300 for game in two day? Well, there you have it guys. My look at the FX6300 running a GTX 1050 Ti. Overall, I was happy with the performance of the system, though I do have some concerns going into the future with newer games. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this. Next, I plan on taking a look at the FX6300 with a GTX 1060 6 gig. Other than that, that's all I have, and thanks for watching, guys. Peace.